This is for educational purposes only. Happiness is free, and it is easier than you think. By Lester Levinson and Hale Doskin. How to gain the maximum benefit from this book. A seven-week course on liberating the happiness, peace, and joy within. This book is designed to be a seven-week home study course on the ultimate happiness. Read and work with one chapter per week. Each chapter contains a session from Lester along with my comments and suggestions to help you understand his message, as well as space for notes and realizations. However, I would suggest that you do your best to get the most out of Lester's words in each session before moving on to the commentary. You may need to allow some extra time to sit with each paragraph or the whole session. You may also want to revisit the chapter repeatedly throughout the week. You have all the time in the world. We live in an incredibly fast-paced world where we are constantly forcing ourselves to move more rapidly in order just to keep up in our rush to attain our goals especially in the spiritual realm, we are often rushing past the very moment that offers the greatest opportunity for self-recognition. Now, if you read this book in a hurry you may find you get what Lester used to call spiritual indigestion. Therefore, I highly encourage you to read this material and approach it as an exploration of life as though you have all the time in the world. Don't believe anything we say, especially with spiritual teachers, there is a tendency simply to accept what they say on hearsay or belief. Lester strongly felt that we should avoid doing this with any teacher. Instead we should allow ourselves to stay open to a teacher's message as an exploration or an experiment in consciousness. We should only accept what he or she teaches once we can prove it for ourselves through our own experience. Lester used to call this taking it for checking. I suggest that you take everything that you are exposed to in this book for checking. Allow yourself to be as open to the message as you can without accepting it on blind faith. You will find that this material has much more value for you when you explore it in your own life. On the other hand, I also highly recommend that you suspend comparison and judgment as best you can. You may find that some of what you are exposed to in this book contradicts what you have learned from other teachers. I would suggest that you do not throw out the other material that you have learned, but merely put it aside as best you can while you explore these sessions. Once you have had time to draw your own conclusions. Then you can go back and compare this material to everything else you have learned and see where it fits. Contradiction is inevitable when you compare different paths or traditions of growth. However, this does not invalidate the different points of view. What every good teacher does is speak to the audience at hand to the best of their ability. Sometimes they may appear to contradict themselves because each audience they address needs to experience the teachings from different levels or perspectives. For this reason you may even notice apparent contradictions between me and Lester and Lester and himself. Contradiction can be most palpable when you compare different teachers. Not only are they speaking to different audiences. They are also bringing their own unique perspective to the topic, as they should be. When it comes to truth, if you can allow yourself to embrace all possibilities you will find yourself understanding and applying the wisdom you gain on a much more useful, deeper, and heartfelt level. There are many rays that lead to the one sun. It is a matter of resonance. From my perspective, everything in the world has its own vibration or resonance including you and everyone you meet. Have you ever noticed that some people tend to pull you up when you are with them and others seem to pull you down, and that they often don't need to say or do anything to have this effect on you? As we grow in understanding on the path, our resonance or frequency tends to go up. But it is not just a matter of higher or lower. We all relate better with some people than others, even if they are on the same level of vibration as us. Of course the same thing is true for teachers. As you read this material, you may find that you resonate intensely with certain statements while others leave you feeling blank or unmoved. Lester recommended that you highlight the chapters, phrases, or statements that move you most for future reference then go back and spend some time pondering them. Over time, as you revisit this material, other parts of it will stand out more than they did initially. That is because you will have changed and become ready to see things from a new perspective. When this happens, 
Allow yourself to honor the change and shift your focus accordingly. About Lester's language. Lester had a unique way of using the English language. I have purposely preserved his style of communication because I've noticed that when you read or listen to any teacher in his or her own vernacular, the words have more of an import than when they have been heavily edited. My intention here is to give you the feel of having been present as Lester's talks unfolded, so that you can be as open as possible to his deepest message. Lester came to this unique communication style for several reasons. His realization came quickly and spontaneously without him following any particular teacher or discipline or even having done any reading or studying of the path. Thus he had no language that adequately expressed what he was experiencing and what he wanted to share with others. As a result he looked in existing spiritual books from both the East and the West to try and find a suitable language that would best communicate his amazing discoveries. From the East, he was attracted to the teachings and writings of Ramana Maharishi and Paramahansa Yogananda. From the West, he drew upon the Bible, especially the New Testament. You will probably notice the influence of these sources in his writing. Occasionally he even slips into Old English to express himself. Most of the Lester material in this book comes from talks that took place in the 1960s and early 1970s. Therefore he often uses a vernacular that was more appropriate for that era. You will notice that his reference to current events and things like population figures are also reflective of that same time period. In addition, Lester had difficulty grounding himself in time. He saw time as a self-imposed limitation or merely a concept. He would refer to things as happening yesterday that happened 10 or 20 years earlier, and things that were about to happen that have yet to occur. He always seemed to be factually accurate and yet frequently was not able to place his perceptions in the appropriate time period. Lester also did not believe in the limitation of space so here and there often had the same meaning to him. He would often refer to getting, there, when referring to beingness when he really meant here, or, going free, when he knew there was nowhere to go. He also used language this way because he was wanting to communicate to people where they were. Most people believe that beingness is apart from where they are now. That's why they go looking for it. The there, that Lester referred to when speaking of beingness is closer than your breath. Lester also learned his instructing style from an old school that uses imperatives heavily. He often used the charged words should, have to, must, and only. These charged words were often used by Lester to wake people up by using a little extra force. If you notice that these words stir up resistance in you, this is normal. These words tend to do that in most of us. Allow yourself to let go of the resistance as best you can and be open to the underlying message. Please keep these points in mind as you read the sessions so you can allow yourself to remain as open as possible to his message without getting lost in how it is being communicated. When two or more are gathered in thy name. The exercises that follow each session have been or will be explored as part of the advanced courses we teach at Sedona Training Associates. They are designed so that you can benefit from either doing them on your own or sharing them with a friend, relative, or loved one. There is an awesome power that is unleashed when we gather together to focus on truth. That is why Sedona Training Associates hosts live seminars to explore this topic and why happens naturally if you are open to it. Refrain from leading, judging their responses, or giving them advice. Also refrain from discussing the explorations until you have both completed them during that sitting and you mutually agree to discuss them. Also validate your partner's point of view even if it does not agree with your own. Please refrain from playing the role of counselor or therapist unless you're a trained counselor or therapist and have been specifically asked by your partner to play this role with them. Also, if they bring up a medical condition that would
action, accomplishments, completions, new beginnings, acquiring new abilities or skills, increase in positive feelings, decrease in negative feelings, more love towards all beings. As you read and explore this material you will also have realizations about your own patterns of limitation and realizations about the nature of reality itself. I highly recommend that you write these down as well. There are seven blank pages at the end of each session, one for each day of the week, which are designed for you to write down your gains and realizations. Be open to the unexpected. Realizations and gains definitely will come as you consciously work with this material. However, they will also come when you least expect them. Often it is when we are not looking for, or trying. To in the present moment. The second, is letting go by allowing whatever is to be in this moment, welcoming it fully and seeing it almost like the clouds that pass through the sky, needing no correction, no changing, no fixing. The third way, is letting go by diving into the very core of whatever the feeling is. When we dive into the very core of any feeling, we discover that it's empty inside, or full of goodness not full of the darkness that we generally assume will be there. I recently developed a fourth way of letting go that we call holistic releasing trademark. This process is what many of the suggestions at the end of each chapter are all about. It has two purposes. If you've worked with the seed in a method registered before, it's a way of deepening the work that you're already doing. And if you haven't worked with the seed in a method registered before, it's a way to open your understanding of the whole process of letting go. It is a way of having whatever you want in life. The holistic releasing trademark process will help you to collapse, dissolve, or let go of whatever sense of inner imitation you may be experiencing in your life. As you work with the suggestions throughout this book, your understanding of this new process will deepen and you'll find yourself spontaneously practicing this process in life. Noticing more possibilities and seeing alternatives, you will feel more flexible, more open, and much more capable of handling whatever life dishes out to you. Holistic releasing trademark is based on the premise that everything we experience in life, whether real or imagined, arises in pairs or polarities or duality. Because of life's underlying unity, if we have in, we also have out. If we have right, we also have wrong. If we have good, we also have bad. If we have pain, we also have pleasure. This is quite obvious. However when we live life as though we can hold on to the good and get rid of the bad, we miss the inner truth. When we try to hold on to something good, it always slips away. Whenever we try to clutch on to what we judge as good or preferable, 
it tends to move through our awareness, then think about the converse, what happens when we resist or try to hold away what we don't like, that is right, it persists or gets even bigger, so in effect what we've been doing is pulling what we don't like towards us and pushing what we do like away, we also spend a lot of time and energy magnifying the polarity by trying to keep what we like as far away as possible from what we don't like, all of this is creating the exact opposite effect of what we want, magnifying or even creating what we call problems. I have discovered that when you bring the two sides of a polarity together, it's like bringing matter and antimatter together, or positive and negative energy. The pair neutralizes each other and you're left with much greater freedom, greater presence, and greater understanding. You see solutions, not problems. You feel more open, more alive and more at peace. As you work with the material in this book, you will discover that this effect magnifies over time. You will start to discover more possibilities and see things more clearly. Every time you work with any of the suggestions in this book, you'll get more out of them, more inner understanding. Now, the way we do this is very simple. We simply focus on both sides of the polarity by going back and forth. For instance, a very simple polarity has to do with happiness. Most of us are either feeling relatively happy or unhappy from moment to moment, and we see only one, not the other. So let's just do a little experiment. Could you allow yourself to feel as unhappy as you do in this moment? And then, could you allow yourself to feel as happy as you do in this moment? And as unhappy as you do in this moment? And as happy as you do in this moment? Do this a few more times and then notice how you feel inside. To practice holistic releasing, I suggest you continually go back and forth on each side of the particular polarity you are exploring. Do this several times in a row and you'll notice something happening inside. The polarities dissolve each other. You may have already noticed this just by doing the exercise. You are left with greater and greater freedom and presence. You may see the underlying unity beneath the apparent duality and separation of the polarities. You may also experience it as an energetic shift. You may feel it as a sense of dissolving or clearing or lightness. You may have greater clarity and understanding within your own self. The way to get the most out of this process is merely to stay as open and as fully engaged as you can from moment to moment. As you ask the questions or repeat the statements to yourself, please do so with as open a mind and a heart as possible, doing your best not to lead with either one. If you must lead with one, do your best to lead with your heart, your feeling sense. Allow yourself to be as open as you can to the thoughts, feelings, sensations, and pictures that arise when you repeatedly ponder the statements or questions. Even better, try not to do anything except to stay open on every level. Let this process, releasing, do you. The initial results from working with the polarity may be subtle, but as you work with it, the results will become more and more profound. And if you're persistent in working on any particular polarity you'll reach a place of neutrality, or you'll reach a place of great expansion inside as you've dissolved your sense of limitation. You may reach a point where you feel as though you've had enough. If this does happen, you can either allow yourself to relax even more into the process or simply take a break. Do something to break the pattern of the moment. Go for a walk, stand up and stretch, open your eyes and look around the room, or close your eyes if you hit them open. Then come back to working with yourself. Do your best to start noticing how you create artificial polarities in life and begin to bring the two sides of these polarities together. Even in noticing them they will start to dissolve, leaving you with growing understanding and freedom. Please let yourself enjoy this work that we do together. Allow it to be fun and easy. Remember, Growth can be fun. The following questions and answers will help you get the most from the process of releasing. In addition to reading them now, review them as often as needed as you work through the material in this book. How can I best do this process? This process will help you to free yourself from all of your unwanted patterns of behavior, thought, and feeling. All that it requires from you is to be as open as you can to the process. It will free you to access clearer thinking 
yet it is not a thinking process. It will help you to access heightened creativity. Although you don't need to be particularly creative to be effective at doing this. Sometimes we will use statements and sometimes we will use questions. When we use questions, we are merely asking you if it is possible to take this action. Yes or no are both acceptable answers. You will often let go even if you say, no. As best you can, answer the question that you choose with a minimum of thought staying away from second guessing or getting into a debate with yourself about the merits of this action or its consequences. All the questions used in this process are deliberately simple. They are not important in and of themselves, but rather are designed to point you to the experience of letting go. This process actually does itself by simply switching back and forth in your mind between the two unique points of view that make up each polarity, they dissolve each other. As you work with this material, Simply be as engaged as you can with an open mind and heart. Allow whatever thoughts, feelings, and limiting beliefs or pictures arise in your consciousness to just be there. Welcome them as fully as you can. You do not even need to try and let them go. They will naturally dissolve each other. What are some of the ways I can apply this in my life? Anytime you find yourself being able to perceive only one possibility, either internally or externally, there is a high likelihood that you are missing at least one or more possibilities. Develop the habit of looking for alternatives and then doing the releasing process to gain more inner clarity. If you find yourself judging yourself or others, you can simply allow yourself to switch back and forth between the judgment you have and its opposite. If you find yourself stuck in any way, allow yourself to be as stuck as you are and as unstuck as you are. Allow yourself to be creative as you work with this process and you will find yourself seeing more and more possibilities and opening to having it all including the ultimate happiness. The following is a list of generic questions that you can use to work on your own issues and polarities, could I allow myself to resist as much as I do, could I allow myself to welcome, allow, as best as I can, could I allow myself to reject as much as I do, could I allow myself to accept as best as I can, could I allow myself to dislike as much as I do, could I allow myself to like as much as I do, could I allow myself to hate as much as I do, could I allow myself to love as best as I can, could I allow myself to want to change as much as I do, could I allow myself to let go of wanting to change as best I can, could I allow myself to say no to, could I allow myself to say yes to? Could I allow myself to be as open to as I am? Could I allow myself to be as closed? You will start to see more solutions rather than just problems. Over time it may even feel positively blissful. The changes become more pronounced the longer you practice. How do I know I'm doing it right? If you notice any positive shifts in feeling, attitude, or behavior, then you are doing it right. However, every issue you work on may require different amounts of releasing. If at first it doesn't shift completely. Release and release again. Continue releasing until you have all born with the innate ability to let go. If you have ever watched a Figure it out, try letting go of the wanting to figure it out, 
and see what happens. How could something this simple be so powerful? The most powerful and usable things in life are often the simplest. When things are allowed to remain simple, they are easy to remember and duplicate. No one has to convince you how critically important breathing is, yet if I were to give you a procedure to follow for breathing it would be, breathe in, breathe out, repeat as needed. What could be simpler, yet there is little that is more fundamental to your life. As you use holistic releasing trademark over time, you will discover that it can become as easy as second nature and require as little thought as breathing does now. What should I do if I find myself getting caught up into old patterns of behavior or I just plain forget to release? First, it is important to remember that this is to be expected and it's okay. Your ability to release will increase over time. When you recognize that there is a problem, you can always release now. When learning to release, you may go through the following progression. 1. You will do things just the way you did them before and you will only remember to release afterwards. The moment you recognize that there is a problem, simply release. 2. Over time, you will start to catch yourself in the middle, when you are involved in the old behavior pattern. You can release when you recognize that you are doing it again, and you will find that you are able to change the old pattern. 3. Over more time you will catch yourself about to get caught up in the pattern again and you will release and not do it. 4. Finally, you won't even need to release about that particular tendency because you will have completely let it go. If you allow yourself to be persistent, your attitude and effectiveness will eventually change for the better, even about long-standing problems. It is also helpful to schedule short releasing breaks throughout your day to remind yourself to release, relax, have fun and enjoy. As you work through the book, you may find your life getting lighter and freer and more alive. You may also find that you start to uncover some of the universal truths for which you have been striving. Congratulations on beginning this journey to the place that you have never left, the heart of awareness. It is my sincerest hope that this material will quickly help you to discover and live a life filled with a happiness without sorrow, a joy without bounds and a peace and bliss that surpass all understanding. If we could only be, just be, we could see our infinity. We could see that we are the all. Lester Levinson